Hello everybody, we are in Mumbai at the Hiranandani Pawai Charge Plus Zone and we have two electric cars with us right now. We have the Tata Nexon EV Max Jet Edition and the BYD E6 here right behind as you can see and we're going to have some charging fun today and this is Plug-in India. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the fast charging that we've done for both these electric cars. The Tata Nexon was at 55% and we charged it to 100% and the BYD E6 was at about 45% and we charged it to 100%. So we have documented for you the charging speed, the charging curve and we have some very cool graphs that we have made that we're going to be sharing with you. So let's talk about what we're working with here. The Tata Nexon EV uh, Max Jet Edition has a 40 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack and the BYD E6 has a 71 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack. So the next one EV Max will, will DC fast charge at 30 kilowatt and the BYD E6 will DC fast charge at 60 kilowatt. And it's very important to know that both these cars have LFP battery packs and no cobalt, no nickel, it's good old iron. So the ambient temperature when we were charging at the Hiranandani Pawai charge zone was about 35 degrees, it was hot. So let's talk about how the charging performance was for both these cars. So after 25 minutes of charging, let's look at the statistics. The voltage has remained quite steady at about 363 volts and the current has been steady at about uh, 85 amperes. So there are two things we have to note here that where you are charging, the DC fast charging brand that you are charging with and the second thing is the ambient temperature. Those factors will affect the ampere and the voltage both. So usually when we go on a long drive, we try to charge up to 90% because the last 10% takes a long time. But for this exercise to complete the graph, we have charged up till 100%. So after 15 minutes of charging, we noticed that the BYD E6 was at SOC 65% and the current started dropping from 127 amperes to 85 amperes and the voltage remained constant at about 465 amperes. So guys, I'm back in Sikkim and while I was on my way here, I was analyzing the data given out by the fast charging 
of the Nexon EV Max and the BYD E6 and I thought I should talk to you guys about it. So first let's look at the Nexon EV Max. Let's look at the first graph. We show the power at which the Nexon EV Max was charging from 50% to 100% SOC. As you can see, the Nexon EV Max can peak at 30 kilowatts. So even if you go to a 60 kilowatt or a 120 kilowatt DC charger, the peak will always remain at 30 kilowatt. After 80%, the Nexon EV Max's BMS accepts a lower power and you can see the rate of charging decreases rapidly. After 90%, you are charging speeds plummets to the teens and slows down rapidly after. If you look at the next graph, the current being pumped into the Nexon EV Max's battery. The more current you see here, the more faster you can charge the electric car's battery. We have seen the Kia EV6 charge at around 200 amps and that is an example of super fast charging. As you can see the ne Nexon EV Max zooms to 82-83 amps when we started charging and when it hits a peak of 85.9 amps at 80% SOC you see there is a decrease in the current demanded by the BMS and after 90% there is a dramatic drop in the current demand. Those two graphs tells me that the Nexon EV's BMS has a conservative design. They don't want to cause stress to the LFP cells as more heat builds up as the state of charge increases and the Nexon's BMS is playing safe by reducing the current supply. Now we take a look at the data collected for the BYD E6. We show the power at which the BYD E6 was charging from 50% to 100% SOC. As you can see, the BYD E6 can charge up to 60 kilowatts, but in this case, it touched a peak of 58.3 kilowatts. So even if you go to a 120 kilowatt DC charger, the peak will always remain at around 60 kilowatt. One interesting difference with the BYD E6 was, at the start, it took one to two minutes to get going. It was charging at 8.4 kilowatt. Maybe the BMS of the E6 was doing some battery preconditioning or cooling at this stage, but once that was done, the power zoomed to around 60 watt and remained there. After 60% SOC, there was a slight decrease, and at 80%, it remained steady at 40 kilowatt even after 95% SOC. If you look at the next graph, the current being pumped into the BYD E6 battery. The E6 demanded 127.6 amps of current at its peak. After 80% SOC, it consumed a steady 87 to 88 amps even when the SOC was near 100%. You can clearly see the BYD E6 BMS is not bothered if the SOC is higher. It just demands current at a consistent rate and there was no sudden plummeting of power and current demand like we saw with the Nexon EV Max. This was very interesting. These graphs show that the BYD E6's BMS algorithms, battery cooling and thermal management is at a totally different level as compared to the Tata electric cars. Let's hope Tata updates their systems and we see a lot of improvements in their cars in the coming future.